y'all ready for some nonsense? Check this out! This is Commander Keen's Trek 96, developed by I Have No Clue, published by I Don't Know, and released for an unknown operating system. Depending on where you look on the box, Cyber Digital released this in 1997, or maybe it was CyberX or Cyber.ex, because that's on there too, encapsulated in a weird globe logo. For PC, it states in a yellow starburst, not giving any indication as to whether that means DOS or Windows or even what kind of media is inside. And no, there's no system requirements on the box or anywhere in the packaging. It turns out it is for Windows, it just doesn't tell you. This is one of the single strangest box titles in my collection, second only to Jazz Jackrabbit's Poker Broker, which is credited to the same mysterious company, Cyber Digital. Obviously, each of these releases were intending to capitalize on the popularity of shareware classics like Commander Keen and Jazz Jackrabbit by id Software and Epic Mega Games, respectively. But the thing is, other than the packaging, there's absolutely nothing tying these to their respective inspirations whatsoever. If you like Captain Kirk, you will love Commander Keen. Uh-huh, if you say so. Be quick like a jackrabbit with your cuts, and as smooth as jazz with your bets. Wow, that's a stretch, but hey, gold star for effort. These games are just a clear case of copyright infringement across multiple companies, and I have no idea how these were even sold in the first place. Heck, were they even sold in stores at all? I bought both of these on eBay, sealed, years ago, and neither one of them had a price sticker, a UPC barcode, or any indication of being sold at retail. For all I know, these were handed out by a guy named Fred behind a back road truck stop in Albuquerque. Opening each box doesn't reveal much more, with Commander Keen's Trek 96 only giving you a cardboard sleeve and a plastic bag surrounding a cheaply labeled CD with the same art as the cheaply printed box. Jazz Jackrabbit's Poker Broker, on the other hand, it's <laughs> this CD. Uh, Jazz Jack Rabbit. This is perfect. The misspelling of their own blatant ripoff title pairs beautifully against that trademarkless Windows logo. And again, more confusion as to who actually made this. There's the Cyber.ex logo again, but no mention of Cyber Digital this time. Instead, it says Digital Design Development, California, USA. Can't say I've been able to find anything concrete on any of these company names. Mostly it's just a bunch of confused people asking the same questions I am online. But anyway, let's try these out. And my first order of business with obscure games like this is to make an archive of the disc. But even that wasn't normal in this case. My Blu-ray burner absolutely refused to recognize either disc, instead making repetitive and slightly concerning noises. But I was able to use an old compact CD-ROM on my Windows 98 Capture PC to successfully make a disk image, although it finished suspiciously rapidly. Sure enough, once I looked at the files in Explorer, it turns out that each CD only holds a maximum of 1.3 megabytes. Seriously. You could fit each game on its own 3.5 inch high density floppy disk and still have room to spare. And you've gotta love those truncated 8.3 file names, that's a real sign of quality right there. So yeah, I had to try Jazz Jackrabbit's Poker Broker first, and well, it's pretty darn simplistic. And there's absolutely no mention of Jazz Jackrabbit anywhere. Or even Jazz Jack Rabbit, for that matter. Nope, this is simply the shareware version of Poker Broker 3.0, developed in 1995. Fun fact, one of the developers, and I'll probably butcher this, Dune Win? It's apparently quite the popular name among poker players. I, maybe it's just a popular name in general, but there are an intriguing number of people by that name on ranked poker player websites. So I guess it's only appropriate one would have made a PC game about poker back in the day. Anyway, Poker Broker 3.0 is just the most bog standard draw poker game for Windows you can imagine. Place a bet and you're dealt five cards. Choose which cards to hold and which to replace, then you either win or lose that hand depending on the luck of the draw. Sometimes you'll be given a bonus card out of nowhere, which is just exhilarating. But there's no end goal, no high score table, no other players, nothing really more to the game other than a couple options like peeking at cards and choosing where to cut the deck. And just think, this was version 3.0 of Poker Broker. I can hardly fathom how little the first two versions provided. I at least hoped for a hastily cloned Jazz Jackrabbit as the dealer or something, but nah, this one screen is all you get. Well, you also get this screen, but I think that's a bug and not a feature. Commander Keen's Trek 96 isn't much better to be honest, but let's dive into it anyway. 
Before playing, I had to increase the resolution since it's one of those games that haphazardly piles awkward windows onto the screen. And yeah, this is once again devoid of any mention of its box namesake. Instead of Commander Keen, we simply get Trek 96, a German game by Oliver Linsko and Joschen Burkhardt, calling themselves JNO Software. <laughs> yeah, this is not the episode for me to pronounce names correctly. Anyway, it's a top-down space action strategy game that mimics the popular Star Trek games of the time period. These actually date all the way back to 1971, originally programmed on mainframe computers and subsequently becoming programming fodder for just about anyone learning to code their own games in BASIC or what have you. One of the more popular variants at the time this one was made was Windtrek from 1992, which used a similar selection of windows and GUI elements to update the classic mainframe game. But Trek 96? <laughs> Other than the use of a few WAV files ripped from Next Generation, there's absolutely nothing noteworthy here. You use the arrow keys to move around space, activate a few basic starship systems with the mouse, and hold down keys like shift and control to activate phasers using the most cumbersome aiming reticle in gaming history. It sucks! The game over message though, well that is amazing. Congratulations, you have destroyed the Enterprise. What? Congratulations? Is the goal to destroy the Enterprise? I mean, is that sarcastic? I don't know, man. And I can't say I cared to figure out either because it always crashes after anywhere from two to five minutes, seemingly at random. And that's Commander Keen's Track 96 and Jazz Jackrabbit's Poker Broker. Neither one of them are worth playing, ever, but at the same time they're infinitely fascinating to me. How this kind of thing ended up getting any kind of box distribution is mind-boggling, largely because of when it came out. This was 1997, and the idea that some no-name company from California could pop up and seemingly get away with blatant IP infringement is ludicrous to me. And sure, maybe id and Epic didn't care since Commander Keen and Jazz Jackrabbit were kind of old news by 97, but what about Trek 96? This was a game clearly billing itself as a Star Trek game and using Star Trek assets and trademarks unofficially, and CBS is infamous for coming down hard on any project that even mentions Star Trek. Maybe they did send a cease and desist to them, or maybe they didn't, I can't find anything saying either way. All I know is that these two games are phenomenally bizarre, and I hope that your day is now an enjoyably weirder place to be after having seen them in action. And if you enjoyed this video on these things, then perhaps you would like to see some of my other videos. There are new ones every Monday and Friday here on LGR, on similar topics and beyond. And as always, thank you very much for watching.